Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. And recently I have been digging through some memorabilia boxes and I came across an apron or a bib that I made for my daughter. Now I made these in all different colors for all of my children, but I still have this one left. And so I went digging in my patterns and lo and behold, I still have the pattern. So I have revamped that pattern to make it even easier and quicker and I'm going to share it with you. So here's that original apron. It has a little pocket in the front, a lot of little frills. I did some embroidery, a little area for their arms and ties in the back. Now I remember them wearing this anywhere between the ages of one two, even up to three years old. And as cute as this is with that bias tape and that lace, I do want to make it quicker and easier. So this is going to be the front and the back of the apron. And I'm going to need a pocket. So I have the front and the back of the pockets. The pattern comes on three pages. And you're going to be able to Tape those together so you have one long piece and a pocket. When we join those pattern pieces up, we just need to join up that dotted line so that paper is going to overlap. Tape them together and cut them out. You will have a pattern piece that looks like this. This area here is going to be placed on a fold. So we're going to cut the pattern piece out along that fold. When we open it up, we have this odd shape. So at a quick glance, what is going to happen when this is all together, this little area is going to be stitched right into those seams. And the ties are going to come from this area. And the pocket will go right here. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the pocket. To make that pattern fit, I do have half a pattern. Same idea. We need to cut that out on the fold. So we're going to need two pockets. I'm using quilting cotton, but you can use really any fabric that you'd like. I do have the right sides together on that pocket. And I'm going to sew a quarter inch right along that top edge. So be sure your fabrics are right side touching. Once we have that stitched, just fold that over, match up the edges, and do a row of top stitch. We will now be able to sew that pocket onto one side. We can have fabrics matching, or we can have the fabrics opposite. I'm going to put them on opposite. And that pocket is going to line up. With the original one, I did two rows of stitching, so I had three pockets. So we can still do three pockets, or if you'd like, you can do one pocket and stitch right down the center. I do have the original stitching lines to make the three pockets. So we can mark and just stitch these three layers together and back stitch up here at that top. And while we're at the machine, stitch this edge down. The entire project is going to use a quarter inch seam allowance, but in this case, do a very scant quarter inch. This is just going to hold those layers together. So we now have the three pockets done. And place those right sides together, matching the seams. And we can pin those layers together. These little neckties are going to come out of this area here. And I did put a little star on the pattern for you. You can, if you'd like, just put a loop and put a button on the other side. Or you can add ties. I'm going to use ties made from the selvage of the fabric. And I'm going to turn it once and turn it twice. But this inside piece is going to go inside. But I'll need to press it first. So just using the edge as a guide, I'm going to fold it over and press it once 
And you can see this is just the scrap piece that I cut from this pattern. So I'm going to fold it and press it once, fold it and press it twice. You can see that edge of the salvage. I've pressed it once and then pressed it again. And because I've used just what I've had left over, I'm going to trim off a little bit. Once that's trimmed, I'm just going to tuck it underneath so that salvage is right along the top. I can now top stitch on both sides. So I've gone all the way around and on that one edge, instead of turning it over, I'm just going to use a pair of pinking shears and trim off that edge. If you don't have pinking shears, you can do a little row of zigzag or just leave it. We will need two straps at about 12 inches. The ends that we did not finish get tucked into this little star point. Place that piece in, have a little end stick out. So I have both ties inside. Do a row of stitching from this top, go around that corner, around the neck, and back up. And use a quarter inch seam allowance. Before we go any further, take those ties and tuck them inside. The next row of stitching is going to be a portion of this area. When this is all done, this is going to be folded over and this little end is going to get stitched into the seam allowance. In the pattern, you will see a little note that says stop here. So line up that pattern piece and put a pin right where it says stop here. We need to do that to both sides. Now we're going to be able to stitch from this pin and go up to this point. We do not need to stitch this area closed. So all of this is sewn except this pocket area. Before we sew this edge and this edge in, let's clean up that neckline and give it a press. I do want to put some little clips in here. So I'm just going to take my scissors and clip very close to that seam. So do the snippings, clean off this strap. We're going to turn it right side out and give it a press. I like to do as much sewing as I can when the garment or the project is laying flat. And I do need to do a little bit of top stitching right where I did that original seam. So I'm still going to have this flap open. So start top stitching about an inch up. Top stitch all the way around and stop at about one inch. We will join that up after. It's just easier to do all of this while it's flat. Once that top stitching is done, just take this little knob and match it up to where we did that original stop sign. So it's going to stick out of that seam. And it won't matter if we're doing this side or this side. Just slide your finger to where that stop is and have that little point point out and you'll see how this is going to lay flat and pin that just on that top fabric and do that to both sides. In order to finish this bottom flap, just turn this so that the right sides are touching and just tuck all that inside you're going to be able to see where we stopped and started. So we can match up those edges and pin all those layers together and make sure everything is tucked inside. So here's that original seam where we stopped and started at. There's that little piece of fabric that's poking out. We're going to be able to sew this area here now, but we will need to leave an opening. So leave an opening somewhere between three inches right along the bottom. Pick up where you've left off, put that needle in, stitch, back stitch, continue to the other side, stopping and starting right where you've started and you've left off. Turn this entire thing 
right side out. Push all those seams out and press as if those were seams closed in. I need to do one more row of top stitching. That top stitching is going to close up this hole. Stop and start where our last top stitching line went. That little apron or bib is now done. We have one side that has the pockets. When we turn it over, we do have the shoulder straps where the arms are going to come out here. If we don't want to use the pocket side, we can always use that reverse. So we have these armholes built right in. Let me show you on my teddy bear. So those arms are going to fit right in. When we turn it over, we do have this partial back. I did find that my children did leave this particular style of apron or bib on. I don't know if it was because it has a big front or because it went around the back so it fit more like a shirt, but they did like them and they wore them a lot. It's definitely a little bit more work than just a plain bib, but they are awfully cute. So we have the original one and the new version. This little bib apron definitely has been a walk down memory lane and it was just as much fun to make now as it was then. If you're using non-directional fabric, you're going to need approximately 3 eighths of a yard. If you are using directional fabric, you're going to have to do about two thirds of a yard. I would recommend that you print out the pattern and bring this pattern to the store with you. You can even do two of them so you have that full shape. So you can actually put it on the fabric when you do go shopping. So you can decide if you want patterns going in one direction or patterns going in the other. Thank you for joining Teddy and me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. <laughs> Bye for now.